What's up, YouTube? So, we're on a quick video. I hadn't made a video in the car in a minute, so I wanted to do that um, out here today because I hit a flat and it was a screw. I'll put an image up on the screen. This is like my 20th flat this since I've owned the car. So, like, that's like 10 flats a year uh, at this point because I've been in the car for two years now since February 2023, so a little over two years, and I've had at least 10 of these things. I can't tell you the amount of tires I've gone through. But um, anyway, this is where the nail was. And again, you'll see an image on the screen. It was right there. Thankfully, it was in the tread. Now the belts, the steel belts are technically like right here in the tire, somewhere in the middle. So this is actually a little out of the belt, but they were still able to plug patch it at the tire shop. So I didn't have to buy a whole new tire, which is really nice. But I wanted to make the video because it's the time of year where I'm kind of going over my suspension. As you guys seen from one of the last videos, I just redid the entire rear end on this car. So I took both the knuckles out and changed both the rear knuckles on the car, as well as the hubs. I didn't need to do the hubs, but I figured since I was doing the knuckle, why not just do the hub? So I did that. And that was because I hit a curb with the rear end, like literally went over it and the car like flew up and it damaged the knuckle. Um, so that wasn't the car's fault. It was more mine because I just made the turn too hard. And I was just flying and I wasn't paying attention and that's what happened with that. So can't blame Tesla for that one. But uh, if you guys want to see that video, check on my channel. It's in the videos. Um, you'll see it there and you guys can watch how to, how to do that whole job. It wasn't as hard as I thought, but it was definitely a lot of bolts. But anyway, since I just redid that about 3,000 miles ago, around the same time I got these tires, um, I figured it was time to come under here and check the suspension torque. So... Uh, this is actually something I recommend all Tesla Model 3 performance owners or just Tesla owners in general. You can find all of the torque specs for the entire car on Tesla's website. The manuals are there for everybody to see. You just look up the part you're changing or what you want the torque spec on, and it's right there. Um, I do recommend to go about five foot-pounds over whatever the torque spec is because most of the Tesla suspension, as you guys can see under here, is held on by pure clamping force like this guy here that's held into the subframe by just the clamping force on the bolt um same with these here um this lower lateral link arm that's held on there with just clamping force and you guys can actually see the mountain pass performance bearings in there those aren't stock stock this part has bushings but those are swapped with bearings for wear. These are actually rated for the lifetime of the car, not to go bad. Um, same with these. I left the bushings, but you can see there's Mount Pass Performance inserts in there. And that's what those blue blue guys are there, is the Mount Pass Performance inserts. But so while I was under here, I retorqued the bolts here. Um, those are, that's a, a 22 millimeter socket. Um, same with this bolt. That was also 22 millimeter socket. I retorqued that. I retorqued both of those bolts there on that arm. I retorqued the bolts there on this uh, middle lateral arm connector there. Those got torqued. I retorqued the bolt on the um, tie rod end there. And I retorqued the bolts on my sway bar. And actually this one moved a little bit, which is why i'm doing this because they do move because it's a suspension so it's constantly getting hit with vibration um and and you know nvh as they call it noise uh vibration and harshness from the road so with that like suspension bolts naturally slowly come a little bit loose and it's good to retorque them um these bolts here on the mountain pass performance front up control arms i'll retorque those as well um to hold those shim stacks in as you can see there um and, you know, again, this is another part that fails commonly on the Model 3s is this uh, up front up control arm. Um, so that's that's swapped now, and this is a bearing. Uh, same with the ends there. Those are bearings instead of bushings. This arm no longer has the bushings. And you can see their logo there. But this is not hard to do, guys. Anybody can get a torque wrench. I'll show you guys what I use. You just take the tire off, come under here, um, and, and torque these bolts. Now, to get to these bolts, you do have to remove the skid plate. As you all know from previous videos that I have on the channel. I put solid metal skid plates and that's a very thick skid plate there. Like nothing's going through that. Um, I recommend that as well because your front motor, if you'll look, let's see if I can get under here to show you. Your front motor is right 
there. You can see the bottom of the motor is right behind that, the bottom of that skid plate there. But yeah, so your front motor is right under there. So like if you have a plastic skid plate, this metal one that's solid is like 200 bucks. You can get under there and install it yourself. It's just four bolts on the back and four bolts on the front. And again, the torque spec for those bolts can be found on Tesla's website. I do recommend putting blue Loctite in these just to hold those um, suspension bolts on. It'll help them stay in place and help with any vibration from the road. Um, but like I said, guys, I recommend this. It's gonna, it might save you $8,000 on a motor. It, it could be very worth it. Same with the back. The one back there is a solid metal skid plate. Like I recommend that for the back as well because right under that is the motor assembly. And if anything flies up and hits that, if it's not metal, you're gonna be in trouble. Um, so, like I said, to get to these bolts, you got to take the skid plate off. It's easy to do. Then you could go right under there with the 22 millimeter socket, torque those down to the, the stock spec that, again, can be found on Tesla's website. And it's not hard to do, guys, but I recommend retorquing your entire front. You know, I would say do this like when you do your annual maintenance. I would say this once a year, to be honest with you. These cars are so heavy that there's a lot of force being put on the suspension and a lot of the suspension is held in with those bolts, the clamping force. So like, again, I would recommend you go under there, you torque those. A lot of the bolts in the back can actually be done with the tire on. If you get under here, you might have to jack the car up, but you can torque this bolt to 85 foot pounds. You could actually do 90 if you wanna be extra tight. Uh, same with this one, could be torqued to 90. And this is just a lower section that holds the strut, the strut on and then what holds the knuckle on. And same thing for the other side there. Um, you can also reach that bolt there on your aft link in the rear and tighten that one down if you want. I like torque that down. That holds your knuckle in place um, <clears throat> with the lateral movement from the road. So you can torque that. And if you wanna get to the rest of the bolts, you gotta take the tire off. But like, you know, again, this is something I recommend doing honestly once a year. It's not hard, take the tire off. Come under here with the torque wrench. You can torque it yourself. You don't have to pay Tesla. They're going to charge you an arm and leg to do it. Um, you will have to invest some tools. If you have a Harbor Freight near you, they make some pretty good torque wrenches by Icon, which is basically a snap-on knockoff, but they do have a lifetime warranty on these. Anything happens, bring the tool to Harbor Freight. They'll replace it for you completely for free. I used to work at Harbor Freight, so I can tell you guys that they do stand up to their warranty. If something goes wrong, they'll, they'll swap it. And these are very good tools from Icon. It's like, it's the best you can get next to Snap-on. So, you know, look, what I would say for this job is get you a half inch torque wrench, one that's long like this. You can use this on your lugs for your wheels. The lugs, I would recommend torquing to about 130 foot pounds. Um, that's not gonna hurt anything and to help keep the lugs on. And then always remember, after about 100 miles of driving, Go back and retorque your lugs. They will move a little bit because they the metal it, it sinks into place on the tire. Like give it about a hundred miles, come back, retorque your lugs. I'm telling you guys, it's worth it. It's not hard to do. It takes two seconds. So get you one of these. You can use this on your big suspension bolts, like those ones I showed you at the bottom of that rear knuckle there. And you can use it on your lugs. It's going to be a well worth investment for you. Um, the next one I would say is get a little quarter inch torque wrench. This is actually for your skid plates. Believe it or not, yes, your skid bolt, your skid plate bolts do have a torque spec. And also I would put blue Loctite on the skid plate bolts. That's gonna help hold those bolts in place when the skid plates are vibrating from the road. So I would recommend that. And pretty much all those bolts are gonna be a 10 millimeter socket. And you can buy a, you know, a quarter inch drive set like this from again, Harbor Freight get you that 10 millimeter socket you could pretty much remove all the bolts with the 10 millimeter socket and then when you put them back on retorque them down i think it's about five foot pounds for all the bolts uh at least for the front i think the rear are about 11 foot pounds which i don't know what that translates to in inch pounds but if you want to be sure just look up the tesla manual it'll tell you there but definitely blue loctite torque them down that'll hold your skid plates on especially if they're metal the metal ones are heavier than the plastic ones you need to make sure they're torqued down the spec you need to make sure there's loctite heavier skid plate, more vibration, more likely to fall off. Not saying it'll happen, just in case. The last torque wrench you'll need is probably gonna be a 3 8 inch drive torque wrench. And that's gonna be for 
a lot of your other suspension bolts like your sway bar end links and you can actually use this torque wrench on some of the bigger bolts too just get a uh, adapter like this to go to half inch and you can put a lot of your half inch sockets on that adapter to be used on the rest of the suspension if you wanted to and i will tell you guys if you're torquing your suspension a lot of the common bolts you're going to need is a 15 for the sway bar end leak links both the front and the back i believe take a 15 uh, the back might take an 18 um, you're going to need an 18 for a lot of the rear suspension arms when you're torquing those down uh, a lot of them take an 18. Uh, i don't think anything on the front takes an 18 but a lot of the back does and then for the front, you're going to need a 21. A lot of the arms in the front take a 21. And the big bolts in the back take a 21. That's also the same size socket you need for your lugs. So you should already have one of these if you're torquing your own lugs. And then the last one, uh, this is for the front, is going to be a 22 millimeter socket. It's going to be for all your front suspension bolts. Now, we're not all of them, but a lot of the big ones, especially those ones I showed you with the lower arms at the bottom, are going to take that 22. So, like... Look up the Tesla factory torque, add about five foot pounds onto it just to be safe because the suspension bolts, you want it tight. And if you guys are redoing any of these knuckles, I would actually recommend that you get, instead of the blue Loctite, find the orange Loctite that's made for vibration on suspension bolts, but it's not red, so it is removable. But if you guys get orange Loctite made for that vibration, put that on your suspension bolts while you're doing the job then torque them down that's going to hold everything nicely in place on that tesla suspension which again i recommend retorquing this about annually once a year stuff moves i can tell you guys at one of my sway bar bolts tightened when i went to do it and i just torqued all this like a year ago and it moved because it's vibrating and constantly being tugged on it happens it's just it's physics um and then also one of my lower bolts did move a little bit when i went to torque it so that tells you like something you need to do if you put orange loctite though this will prevent that from happening i did on my back but the reason my front moved was because i didn't i didn't have any orange on the front i just had them torqued but yeah guys this isn't hard to do it really just takes about 350 dollars to invest in the torque wrenches if you buy the good ones like those icon ones they're going to run you about a hundred dollars each except for that small quarter wrench one that one's from pittsburgh it's a cheaper wrench it's like 20 bucks but the big icons the three inch drive and the half inch drive those are going to run you a little more money but it's worth it with the lifetime warranty and they last a while they get the job done so Anyway, guys, I just want to bring this video. I hope this helps, like, Model 3 performance owners out there know, like, it is recommended to retorque your suspension. Um, like, if you're somebody that just gets in the car and drives it, okay, that's great, but you're going to end up having problems down the line and having to go to Tesla service. They're going to charge you probably four or 500 bucks to retorque the suspension when you could have done it yourself with your own torque wrench and a jack. So, yeah. Hope this helps somebody out there.